The vast outback of Australia holds many secrets, some of which are buried and forgotten to time, and others which many would wish to stay buried and forgotten. One of the more sinister secrets Australia's outback holds is the time we nuked it. For a brief period in the 1950s and 60s, nuclear tests were conducted in Australia. How did this happen? And who was behind the tests? At the end of World War II, the first country to obtain nuclear weapons were the Americans. The British collaborated with the Americans in the development of the nuclear bomb in the well-known Manhattan Project. After the creation and deployment of the first nuclear weapon, Trinity, the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed with nuclear weapons, contributing to the end of World War II. Following the end of the war, the British expected that the Americans would share their knowledge on how their nuclear weapons were made, but the Americans instead chose not to share. This prompted the British to begin their own nuclear weapons program, codenamed High Explosives Research. Very subtle. Next, a site for testing the nuclear weapons had to be chosen. The British eyed Australia for many reasons. For one, the Prime Minister at the time, Robert Menzies, did have friendly relations with the British. Secondly, Australia in general had close ties with them, and also their geography was important, as Australia is known for its vast and unpopulated outback. So for the reasons of Australia's remote locations, its close ties to the British, and the desperation of the UK government to develop their own atomic weapons, Australia had been chosen for the atomic tests. The first test site chosen was the Montebello Islands, for which the British would codename their first nuclear weapons project, Operation Hurricane. The islands were considered remote enough that radioactive fallout would not affect any human habitation from the tests. The HMS Plym, a UK vessel, housed the bomb 400 metres from the shore of one of the islands, and its detonation marked the UK as the third country to possess and test nuclear weapons. The detonation occurred on the 2nd of October 1952 and had a yield of 25 kilotons of TNT. However, the selection of the site being remote would prove wrong, as radioactive fallout from this test and two more under the codename Operation Mosaic in 1956 on the island spread across the Australian mainland as far inland as Queensland. In addition to this, in the decades following, some servicemen who were present at the site also commented on the ecological fallout at the site which today would be considered unacceptable. Thousands of dead turtles, full grown and babies, washed up on the shore after the tests. The second series of tests took place on the Australian mainland due to less resources being available from the Royal Navy. The codename for these tests was Operation Totem. A site in South Australia called Emu Fields was chosen, located in an extremely remote corner of the state, just above the Nullarbor Plain. To illustrate just how remote this site was, of the 3,000 tonnes of equipment needed for these tests, just 500 came from what could barely be described as roads, with the remaining 2,500 tonnes having to be flown in. Two tests were conducted at the site. Totem 1 was exploded on the 14th of October 1953, just over a year after the first test in the Montebello Islands. It had a yield of 10 kilotons of TNT. The second test, Totem 2, occurred just 12 days later and had a yield of 8 kilotons of TNT. As a result of the first test, it is known that the fallout cloud, referred to as a black mist, in a 1985 Royal Commission, drifted into local Aboriginal communities causing sickness and injury from the radiation. The third series of tests took place at Maralinga. The problem the British faced with the site at Emu Fields was the sheer remoteness of the site and the dust storms that kept on pounding the site. A site slightly more southwards was chosen with the codename X300, later renamed to Maralinga, which is an Aboriginal term for thunder. The codename for these tests was Operation Buffalo in 1956 and Operation Antler in 1957. The four tests for Operation Buffalo were as follows. One tree at 15 kiloton, Maku at 1.5 kilotons, Kite at 3 kilotons, and Breakaway at 10 kilotons. The tests conducted for Operation Antler were as follows. Taji with a yield of just 930 tons, Biak at 6 kilotons, and Taranki at 26.6 kilotons. Despite these major nuclear tests taking place at Maralinga, it was actually the minor trials of nuclear components that caused longer lasting damage. 550 smaller trials of nuclear components that did not result in nuclear explosions contaminated the ground with radioactive material. At the end of Operation Adler in 1957, these smaller tests continued until 1963, when the opposition by the Australian public rose to 49% opposed with 37% in favour. 
As a result of this and other factors, the last site on the Australian mainland for nuclear testing closed. Many long-lasting effects happened because of nuclear testing on Australian soil. Entire Aboriginal communities were displaced, a lot of wildlife was killed directly from the blasts and from the long-term fallout, and humans were both injured in the short term and contracted cancer in the longer term. A study in 1999 found that 30% of participants in the trials had lost their life by their 50s to cancer. In addition to this, multiple cleanups at Maralinga have taken place, but radiation can still be found at the sites, even today. The nuclear tests that took place on the Montebello Islands, Maralinga and Emu Field are a dark chapter in Australia's past, and one that will hopefully never be repeated. In the 21st century, the threat of nuclear weapons is still a real possibility, and on the shores of places like the Montebello Islands, where thousands of dead turtles turned up on its shores, and from the effects of radiations to humans, just from the tests alone, hopefully nuclear war and even nuclear tests will be prevented and seized this century as we grow wiser as a species. As always, thanks for watching.